Hello, welcome to another video. My name is Michael and today instead of showing you how we made something, I'm going to show you where we make stuff. And so this is our craft room and I've got some ideas about how to reorganize some stuff and I thought it might be fun to do like a vlog style video of me just showing you how we store all of our cosplay stuff. Maybe you will pick up on some tips to organize your own crafting spaces and hopefully I mine will look better by the end of this video. And so this is our craft space. We've got these tall shelves. We have the sewing table that I built myself. And uh, this is how it normally looks. Uh, projects halfway completed to be done stuff over here, wigs and things over here. That is, uh, we're up on the second floor. So that's down there. And then just pictures and awards and wands and things over here. So normally for videos, I will clean up all of this stuff before I start recording. But since this is gonna be a vlog style video, this is exactly what it looks like when we're in the middle of everything. Um, just projects all over the place, uh, random patterns. And so I'm gonna be tidying it up today and taking it with me. And the first thing I'm gonna tackle is gonna be down here. Uh, we've got these colored bins under the sewing table that are full of fabric. And so I can't see the fabric and that makes me like miss what's in here sometimes. And so I've got a couple of ideas of what to do and also maybe to consolidate this stationary stuff so that it's not taking up quite so much space. So going downstairs and into the garage, we have been saving slash just forgetting to recycle a whole bunch of cardboard. So I'm gonna be grabbing some of this and taking it upstairs. So what I've seen other cosplayers do is like you take your Amazon boxes and some scissors. These are my uh, like foam cutting snips from So Much Cosplay, which are awesome. And they're very sharp and good at cutting cardboard. But taking your piece of cardboard and then using that as a bolt to wrap your fabric cord in so that uh, you can like and roll it out, which first prevents uh, wrinkling. So that's good. Um, and then you can actually see your fabric lined up in little bolts in your storage space. So I'm going to try that and see how it goes. So this is going pretty well so far. Um, there's a lot of fabric and I'm slowly making my way on getting it rolled up and stacked here, but I'm really excited because I can see it. Uh, it's also a really good review just so I can know just how much yardage of stuff we have because in those bins, I couldn't see anything. And one question you might be asking yourself looking at this enormous pile is, Michael, where do you get all these fabrics? Why do you have so much? Aren't you good at <laughs> buying fabric? And the answer to that is, you know, um, Haley buys all of our fabrics. Um, Haley buys every fabric that we use for all of our cosplay builds. And kind of going through that like this is um, actually really fun because I see all kinds of old friends. Uh, this is a Newt Scamander vest. This is the sleeves of Haley's Aurora dress. Um, this was something from my Michaels collab. This is a piece of Doctor Strange cloak. This is Doctor Strange tunic linen that we had extras of. Um, lots of friends in here, so many friends. Uh, this purple satin from Shannon Fabrics. Um, uh, this is a shower curtain we got at Goodwill. Um, it's really fun going through all of this because it's all memories. Mary Poppins gloves, uh, my Hobbit outfit, my Bobatons coat is there. Haley's uh, Luna Lovegood dress, uh, the silver lining under there, the crepe back satin, and just all kinds of stuff that we've accumulated over the years. And you just end up with like one or two yards left that you didn't need for the project. So that's where most of this comes from and Goodwill and just years of accumulating things. This is taking a lot longer than I thought. So I got on Instagram and asked if anybody has any cosplay questions that I could answer during this video. And the first one is from Wizards of Waverly Grace, which is uh, how do you store away your cosplays? So I'm gonna show you. Any cosplays that have small pieces or accessories or belts or other things specifically go in these boxes. So I've got them labeled for which costumes they go with and uh, they 
pretty much just stay organized that way. So, and I rotate out these boxes kind of for like which costumes we're wearing more often. Um, the Doctor Strange box, which is Doctor Strange on there, um, gets a lot of action. And uh, yeah, that's how I store them here. And then this is our cosplay closet. And there they all are. And this isn't even all of them. Um, this is one closet of two. Uh, in the guest room slash office, we also have a closet, but this is where I keep all of the wand boxes from my wand videos. They are all up there. And then these are all of our costumes. These are all the ones we've made. Um, and you see lots of familiar friends in here going through um, Merlin and my Michaels collab and Captain Hook are all in here. And then we have wigs, lots of wigs. We also store wigs in this shoe rack on the door. That's a really great holder for lots of different wigs. And then down here we have additional drawers that hold more cosplay pieces. This is more kind of just random accessories and other things that we'll pull out for Halloween costumes. Most of that goes in here. Here. But uh, Captain America shield, so much stuff ends up in this, this closet. That's why I'm reorganizing it. Oh, and then under here, this is where we keep uh, more fabric. Uh, there's more fabric down here that needs to be bolted and organized. And then all of our cosplay shoes just end up in a massive pile under here, falling all over the place. Because how do you even store shoes? Uh, this is a lot of mess, but uh, that's why we're reorganizing it. The next question comes from Historically Laced, who asks, what is your first step in creating screen accurate cosplays? So step one has got to be passion for the character. Uh, I don't want to put a whole bunch of effort and time and painstakingly recreating uh, details on costumes that I'm not really excited about and really passionate about. That would just feel like a waste of time. Um, so got to have the passion and then really good reference images. Um, hundreds of reference images, as many reference images as you can possibly find. I really like reference images from costumes that are on display, um, costumes that are seen in the real world as they really are as actual garments. Um, when Haley and I do a lot of cosplays from the Marvel Universe, there's so much CGI. Like, Doctor Strange's cape is mostly CGI because it just does things that capes aren't so allowed to do in the real world. And so getting the cape that is real, that is on like some kind of display somewhere at a convention or at a movie theater or other places, those are the reference images that are gold. Those are the ones I want. Um, especially people who go in and take pictures of every single little detail of things. Those are, I, I love, I love you people. The people who do that, just every little stitch, every little thing. And I collect all of those images in a Google Drive so that I can access them from my computer computer or my iPad or my phone if I'm fabric shopping or something so that I can pull it up wherever I am. Some people really like to print out all of those pictures and put them in a binder. That works too, but I like don't carry around binders everywhere I go. So I might have the opportunity to go fabric shopping or I might find something online or Haley might need something and it's really easy just to pull it out of the Google Drive and send it to her directly so that she can start looking for fabrics that way. So um, those are the two tips I have are passion and lots of reference images. Next question is from Lord Eldercraft who asks, when patterning out collars for capes or other pieces, how do you go about doing that? Um, full disclosure, I hate patterning collars. Um, a lot of people complain about patterning sleeves. I love patterning sleeves. I think sleeves are so easy. I hate patterning collars. Collars are really hard because they start up high and then they come down low. So maybe not that low, but you know, they, they come down like to the neck. So they have to be curved, but they have to be curved the appropriate amount. So you have to start here and then come down. So they can't just be flat pieces because then you'll just have a collar sticking out like this. Maybe that's what you're going for. But most of the time they are curved. So getting that curve right, it usually takes me like five or six tries to pattern out a collar because I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not professionally trained. And so I'll just, cut out a piece, kind of trying to figure out if the curve's good enough. I'll um, baste it onto the, the whatever my jacket or cape or whatever I'm working on. So basting is using really loose stitches that are meant to be pulled out just to keep things together temporarily. You could also pin it or use Wonder Clips to put it in that way and just experiment and just kind of pattern it over and over. If you're not like a super classically trained tailor or anything, uh, it's just through experimentation. And so it's doing that over and over. I'll also copy collars off of other pieces. So if there's a collar that I really like 
off of a shirt or a jacket or something else, my tuxedo cape, that's what I did. I have kind of a, a tuxedo style jacket and I literally just lay the jacket out flat on my cutting table and then copied the shapes of those into muslin. And then kind of through experimentation and through tweaking, got it to where it actually looked like a tuxedo lapel. So you could absolutely just copy stuff <laughs> that you already own. They've already done the work for you. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Hi, Michael from the future here. Uh, so we're realizing that this video is getting a bit long and I did post on Instagram that I wanted to do a cosplay Q&A while I was cleaning and tidying up the room. So we're gonna hold off on that and post that Q&A in a separate video that's gonna be coming out next. So keep an eye out for that. Sorry in standard Michael fashion, I got long winded, but the Q&A is coming and look for that in a future video. So now on for the rest of the video. All right, so it's two days later. That took way longer than I thought it was going to, but it worked and it's now night and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Also, Haley's here, yay. So here we have the fruits of my labors. I pretty much took anything in our stash that was more than a yard and rolled it up on the cardboard. And we have a lot of fabric. So we definitely need to do more projects where we get rid of the hoard, but it worked really well and I can see everything, which is the most important part. Um, in this bin, we have um, beads. So that is gonna, that bin is gonna stay. We're not gonna get rid of that bin. And then over here, we have mostly like stationary stuff like cards and just notebooks and journals and other things in there. So this is all looking really good. And then everything that was less than a yard or was just a really weird shape ended up in this bin. So it's got a lot of little bits and pieces of things that I don't really want to get rid of. Like maybe one day I'll use them as an applique or something. Um, or I want a sample of something or just to remember what something looked or felt like. So all of that is pretty much in these two bins. And I haven't really been through this one yet. So I have to go through this one too. But these two pretty much hold everything that's smaller than a yard where everything else ended up on the other shelves. Then up at the top of the shelf, there is more fabric. So these are all things that are going to be future projects that we pretty much decided what they're going to be. It's just the act of making them. So there's pretty much fabric all over this room, but that's what happens when you find good fabric prices. It also freed up five of these bins that I'm going to use to replace these bins because these are really old and they don't really have a lot of structural integrity left. So that's what's going to happen now. These bins just pretty much hold everything else. Um, all of our glues are in here. So that's super glue, that's epoxy glue, that's hot glue, Elmer's glue, glue sticks, all the glues go in there. This is the Sewing Notions bucket. Um, there's all the buttons and zippers and uh, grommets and Velcro and dies. All of those things that we just end up with all go in here. Bias trims. Um, Haley gets lots of bias trims on eBay. So you can get those like really cheap and it's just a whole bunch of different colors. You never know what you might need. All of that's in there. This one is pretty much just the pit of despair. Um, this is just all the random, most random crafting items end up in here. Things that we'll use a little bit for a couple of projects and then there's a lot left and it just all ends up in here. And then this one's all yarn. Um, I do know how to knit, but I'm not very good at it and I don't really have the time for it a lot because I'm sewing all the time, but uh, most of the, the yarns and strings and other stuff ends up in here. The glues have now been transferred. Uh, there was some really, really, really old gross stuff in there. Um, old gloves, things that have dried up many years ago that were just sitting at the bottom. So we're gonna get rid of that. Um, a couple of my favorite glues is gonna be this one, the Lockrite Super Glue Gel Control. Um, the squeezy is really good and this solidifies in like 20 seconds. This is what I used to make our Agatha Dark Hold book. Um, was this glue, I really like it. 
And then E6000 is of course super, super helpful and useful for all kinds of cosplay needs, gluing, rhinestones, um, just about anything. E6000 is great, we use it all the time. And then we've got tons of glue sticks and lots of different glue guns. Uh, my new favorite one is gonna be this one with the precision tip. That is really helpful for small jobs. Um, this is the one that I've had for like years. I've had this since high school. I've had this for such a long time. Um, this is our big Mamma Jamma one and it gets really hot, um, probably too hot, honestly. I don't use this one very much. It's old and it just gets so hot that like the glue is like scalding. Um, and then we've just got extra ones that we've accumulated over the years. So pretty much anything that would be considered, you know, yarn or string goes in here. Um, this is all stuff that I use for my Ragnarok Doctor Strange, like this uh, wax cording. Um, and also I found more embroidery floss in here that I could have used for Doctor Strange. But I had to go buy more, but that was hiding in there. And lots of other stuff, my knitting needles, all kinds of things are in here, but it's mostly all yarn. I use this mostly for piping now since I don't really knit anymore. Um, it's probably too much, but I'm not going to get rid of it, so it'll just sit here at the bottom. Into the Sewing Notions box are going to be all of our leftover writ dies. You know, you don't always use the whole bottle, so sometimes you just end up with a little bit here and there, so all of those are there. Over here, we've got zippers. Um, invisible zippers are definitely my favorite to use because they are invisible. Not all of these are invisible, and some are like old metal ones, um, a lot of, from lots on eBay. Like, you can just get old sewing stuff for like really inexpensive, so we accumulate a couple of those. Um, same thing with buttons, accumulate a lot of buttons. I save every button that comes like extra button on a pants or something like that, a coat. Um, they all end up here because someday I might need them. Um, I'm a huge fan of Taylor Chalk. I love this box because it's got three different colors in it. Uh, red, oh, it's got four different colors. Blue, red, yellow, and white uh, for different fabric colors. So I use these all the time and uh, it's good to have a good supply of them. Um, these are all bias strips. So just a big old bag of bias strips that um, are helpful for trims, buttons, more buttons, those go together. There's some more dye, extra scissors, Velcro, um, my sewing labels, uh, keep the extra ones here, um, more buttons. Uh, these are all just more trims and bias tapes, so all kinds of different colors and uses here. Um, this is all of my hook and eyes. All of my hook and eye attachments go in this bag. Um, grommet kit, grommet hole puncher, Velcro, um, more grommets. <laughs> There's so much in this. Magnets and cape, uh, cape chains. Uh, these are vintage um, for like coats, coat hangers, and jacket hangers. So I use those for my capes. Um, lots of fun stuff in this box. Call this box the pit of despair for a good reason. Um, there's feathers everywhere, and now they're all over me, little bits of feathers, so those all got thrown away. Uh, mostly this is gonna be clay and crafting things, um, beeswax for a candle project, um, calligraphy stuff in here. Uh, these are the shower curtains that we use for, uh, shower curtain rings that we use for Philip's cape. Um, you had to order them by the dozen and we only needed two. Um, so you just, this is just where all the extra stuff ends up. This is where I might make a little potion someday and I might need these little bottles and I can't throw them away because I can't let anything go. And that's what this basket has become. Some of this is your stuff too. And I did discover this little bag, which is full of leftover pieces from the first prop we ever made, which was Ray's staff from The Force Awakens. It is all made out of uh, plumbing supplies, and this is all just leftovers from that project. So that was fun. That's a fun little discovery. 
And with this last bin, this is going to be the remainder of my sewing tool. So that's just the cord for the embroidery machine. I have this tiny iron that is for a little detail work that I use occasionally. I like this thing a lot. I have two Taylor hams. These are great for ironing on curves. And I've got two shapes there. Um, this is all just embroidery stuff. So backing, um, a fusible water soluble stabilizer just different stabilizers and um, the temporary spray that I use to keep the stabilizer uh, attached to the fabric so all of that is going in here which means I have freed up an entire shelf which is going to be the new home for my iron my box of exacto blades and my water filling cup for my iron which I use all the time over on this side of the craft room is this star shelf that Haley painted a long time ago. Uh, in the corner is our just horde of weapons, um, lightsabers, wizard staves, uh, wizard swords, all kinds of stuff over there. Um, this is mostly reference and then patterns that I haven't sorted away yet. The dark hold hangs out on this shelf and my serger usually hangs out there. And then our reference library, growing reference library for costuming and other fun things, fashion pieces, and then my sleeve board, which is super helpful. I love this thing for ironing out sleeves and just kind of difficult seams that need a lot of precision work. Um, a sleeve board is super helpful. And then here's our Hobbit cloth which it's always time to eat. Now it's all nice and clean and dusted. Procedures put away where it belongs and we're all good to go. So this is neat and orderly. Over in this corner of the room by the window, we have this storage bin which holds all of our patterns. And these are all the ones that I've made. Everything up here are all patterns that I've drafted or altered or all of my muslin mock-ups. Everything that I've pretty much ever made is in this drawer. So very special, important drawer. Uh, underneath is going to be patterns, like commercial patterns for me and then uh, Haley's kind of bigger patterns go in there the bigger size ones and then all of Haley's uh, other patterns go in here lots of vintage ones mostly vintage actually um, they're mostly vintage ones in here that uh, we found in various places um, but there's a lot of things that we've never made so lots of things to try out Underneath this sofa, we keep our bin of our leather and faux leather scraps. So vinyl, anything that looks leathery, all goes in here. Lots of these are from buy the pound bins or remnant sales or other things that we've accumulated over the years. So lots of just random stuff that ends up in there. And then I think back behind it, we've got more uh, batting. So that's all cotton batting get squished back there. So trying to find storage in every possible location. Oh, and I almost missed this fusible interfacing. This is from So Much Cosplay. This stuff is amazing. This is a foam interfacing, and it is the stuff that I have in the collar of my Doctor Strange cape, my cloak of levitation. This is what's on the inside. So it is a fusible interfacing, which means it has little glue dots here that when you iron, they melt and adhere to your fabric. And it's a pretty thick foam, so it adds a lot of really good definition. I love this stuff. I have this much of it because I use it all the time time. So all that's left is the top of the sewing table, which is a total mess right now, and I'm going to tidy up and put everything where it's supposed to go. Things are looking so much better. Everything's all put away now. Uh, so I'll show you a bit more of my crafting space. So this is my uh, pegboard and it has all my different thread colors and embroidery thread all in one place so I can see everything. I've got pens and pencils and paint brushes all in these jars, various scissors, the controls for the TV, various measuring tools, my rotary cutter, um, the paint brushes and markers, and my very cherished fabric scissors from So Much Cosplay and Fomore Cutlery, and then other extra scissors, and all of these are also from 
from, from more A2 of these little ones. And then of course my Janome M7 Continental, which is what I make everything on. Then over here, we have my little inspiration board, which is fun stuff all over it and inspirational quotes to keep me going. And this is my sewing box. I got a three-tier crafting box to hold all of my go-to everyday use sewing tools. And so up top, we've got all of my various bobbins. I always try to match my bobbin color, so I switch them out a lot and fill them up a lot. And then empties, and then these are all embroidery bobbins. So embroidery thread is different than regular thread, and so I want the bobbin to be sure that they, um, they work. I've got my hand sewing stuff here, so needles, um, beeswax, to keep thread. Uh, you run the thread through the beeswax so to strengthen it, um, thimbles, and lots of other types of needles. And then lots of good tools here. Um, lots of seam rippers, which I have to use all the time because I make mistakes and have to fix it. Um, this point turner, which is super helpful. Um, this is really great for collars, getting things really sharp and getting that point there without stabbing it with something sharp like that. Like that's not going to poke through fabric. Um, so this is really helpful. Um, got a fabric snip or a uh, thread snips from Fomore, um, a like a hole punch for um, like buttonholes and other things that came with my sewing machine. Um, I use this gauge a lot to make sure that I've got like seam allowance the correct amount, um, a hem the correct amount. I use, I use this tool a lot. Lots of other things here. This is my um, patterning pencil. This is the same pencil I've been using for years to pattern all of my patterns. Uh, this is what I draw on the muslin or paper patterns and it's getting pretty short but this one has been with me since the beginning so I'm gonna be really sad when it uh, gets too short to use uh, but I've got other fabric markers in here um, double-sided one disappearing ink and then this one goes away with water um, so these are all the things that are my grab and go-to's all the time that's why they're up here at the top then on the next level these are things I use often but not quite as often so my tailor chalk is all over here in the various colors my measuring tape I've got elastic thread here for smocking and other kind of random projects. Um, these are the clothing labels, my wizard tailor tag that I put into all of the items I make. I've got one them in white and in black. So those are all here. Um, extra sewing machine needles. You need to be changing out your needle pretty often. And I probably need to be doing it more often, but uh, I just kind of wait till they break and replace them, which probably isn't smart, but those are there. Um, safety pins all go in here, and that's the second tier. And then here on the third tier are things that I use, but not quite so often. Um, these are like really cool hem measurements. So you put these clips all in the bottom of a hem and it makes sure that it's even all the way over. So I've used these occasionally, they're pretty fun. Um, just lots of other stuff, elastic, um, extra pins, uh, extra safety pins, and just kind of stuff um, that I don't use quite so often, but it's still good to have around. So those all go on this level. And then out here are the things I use all the time. So of course my pens. I use these quilting pens because they are long and sharp and they have these nice flat edges so they can go under sewing machine feet, which I don't think you're supposed to sew over your needles or your pens, but I do sometimes. Uh, I've got this pen cushion for my little hedgehog, which is cute. Uh, Wonder Clips, these are one of my favorite things. I, I use them all the time, all the time. I have a huge tub of them because I love them. And I use them all the time, um, highly recommend and wonder clips they are I would say often better than pinning in some situations so I use them constantly and then I have satin pins so I do work with like really like silky fabrics and satins and these big chunky pins poke holes in them and satin pins are a lot thinner and you don't run into all of those problems and then I keep all of the accessories for my Janome machine so all of the extra sewing machine feet it came with a ton of accessories I haven't even used all of these um, and then more stuff here on the bottom. This is also for the embroidery machine and the serger. So all three are part of the Janelle Maker Program and they gave me all the accessories so that I can make cool stuff with them. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you next time. Keep making cool things and we'll see you next time. Bye.